Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us to our latest LinkedIn Live. I've got an absolute pleasure to have here with me Wendy, uh, Wendy Van Gilst uh, joining me on this LinkedIn Live. Hello, Wendy. Hi, Justina. It's great to be here. I'm very excited for our conversation today. Great to have you with us. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation to do this. Uh, for those of you who don't know Wendy, Wendy um, is a person who's got a very strong personal brand. And since the subject of today's LinkedIn Life is personal branding, um, and basically personal branding for employees or how you can manage personal branding of your employees, we thought we'll have this discussion with Wendy and ask us some questions that um, we prepared on the subject. But since it's a LinkedIn Live, I would really appreciate if um, you have any questions, if you're joining us live, feel free to pop them into the chat. Um, I will look for them and that way we'll all join this conversation. So um, I know there's a bit of a delay as well for all of you uh, joining us. Um, so I might see your question a bit later on, but just uh, bear with me on this. So Wendy, um, could you give us a bit of an introduction to how your journey with the subject of personal branding has started? Yes, absolutely. And I think it started years ago before I even knew personal branding was a thing. Uh, it started when I started to work at a big IT company, Oracle, which I think a lot of you will know. And I started really at the beginning of the sales cycle, so in a business development role. To uh, yeah, and, and I was doing a lot of cold calls and, and reaching out to potential customers, picking up the phone, uh, calling them at the wrong time with you know maybe the wrong message because I I didn't really know what they were on at that time, of course. And I was doing that for a couple of weeks, and I was like, I'm not really enjoying this. You know, I'm I'm just bothering people. There, it should be a different way of doing this. Mm. So I thought, why not sending them an email? So I send them a message, see if I can schedule that meeting. At least we have a moment then that they're free to have the conversation. And I started to do that. And funny enough, people were, were replying to me saying, yeah, that's fine. We can have a meeting. And I was like, okay, this, this seems to work. This is already a way I prefer to work. But I also found out that people were checking out my profile. And when I was sharing something, they saw it because I shared it. And it was in their timeline because we connected, uh, but they were also checking out my profile and I posted some content on my profile, which they were viewing as well. And I thought, okay, if I can just prepare them even a bit better before having that conversation, the conversation is going to be even better, right? For the both of us. So that's how it all started. And at some point, um, I, I, I was not cold calling at all anymore. I was just in mailing people, connecting on LinkedIn, being very active, sharing a lot of content. And uh, in those days, you know, LinkedIn was still maybe a bit limited. We didn't have all the functionalities that we have today, but you know, I was doing quite a good job in being relevant for the people I was reaching out to. And I started to help others to do the same because there was like a whole department doing cold calls. Why not all going to a situation where they were better prepared, sending out in mail, scheduling calls and having nicer conversations. Um, and that made me realize that I wanted to move into social media because I found out this is very powerful and I don't want to continue speaking with customers. I want to continue learning about social media. So that's where I think the real personal branding started to hit me because I wanted to move into the social department. And that department was a group of people and also the hiring manager were people that I didn't know because Oracle is a massive organization. So I didn't know those people by name and by person. So I started to share more and more content on topics like social selling. And within a couple of months, that department was reaching out to me and said, you know, there's somebody here in Oracle who is very vocal about social media, who seems to be very successful. We want to have a conversation with you. And at that time, I was still not knowing that this was called personal branding. But looking back at it, it shows me that the reason why they invited me for that conversation was because I was building a personal brand. And from that moment on, I came into several points in my career where I wanted to switch roles within or outside the, the companies I was working at that time. And every time I was thinking in a way like, okay, I'm now in a social listening and social selling role, but I want to go into social advertising. Do I have the experience? 
maybe not. I mean, I studied marketing, but digital marketing was still quite new. Uh, so I started to share a lot of content around social advertising. And what happened, I got an interview conversation, interview process starting on the role that was focused on social advertising. And that was not because my CV showed I had tons of experience, but that was because they saw me on LinkedIn. They saw some of my videos, they saw all my posts, and they felt like, oh, she talks so much about it. I'm pretty sure she knows a lot about it. And that's how I got the interview. And I'm not saying that LinkedIn will give you the job, but at least it gives you the interview and the opportunity to have that conversation and to, to go into that specific area or role that you want. So again, similar with LinkedIn, uh, I reached out to um, the country manager in, in Amsterdam saying, hey, I'm, I'm interested in working at LinkedIn. And he said, let's have a conversation because I know you because of all your activities on LinkedIn. So happy to have that conversation. So it started pretty small, but throughout every step I made in my career, personal branding played a huge part of it. And the fact that we are talking today is also because of LinkedIn and personal branding. So it's uh, for me, it's something that I cannot live without. I mean, it's the only way to be successful, I think, as a professional. I think I was just about to say this, right? The, young, the way how we met was thanks to the fact that you were sharing so much content online, so relevant to what it was that I was interested in. And so many people were actually engaging with the content. And because that I was connected to these people, I started seeing your content in the feed and I started interacting with that content and that's how we started the conversation. And that is the natural way of starting the conversation online, right? How else can you do that if you just send in, like you were saying, cold, if, if, if you were to cold call or send emails where people didn't know anything about you and they couldn't check anything about you before replying, that's very hard, difficult way to build a relationship. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, if you get tons of those emails, why are you going to pick up that phone when somebody calls you? There must be a reason. And the only reason why you pick up a phone is because you want to speak with somebody you trust, you know a bit about, you know a bit about their personality. And that is what personal branding does for you. It gives you a step ahead of others because people already know you. I come into situations where I meet people and they're like, oh, I know you. I know you from LinkedIn and I never met that person before. But the conversation is so much different from bumping into each other, not knowing each other, and also don't have any connection or whatever. So by creating content and being visible, it helps me in almost every conversation I have when people say, hey, I recognize you from LinkedIn. It's, it's really nice. Yes, I can imagine. I've had that situation myself also at a conference where somebody approached me and said, oh, I know you. We've been uh, we've been talking on LinkedIn about this subject. I thought, oh, gosh, yes, of course. So it's really it's really it's really great experience where that happens when you realize the virtual world then mix with the real world. And uh, like you say, it's easier to then start a conversation and build even stronger relationship. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I think quite a few people, I have to say, I've, I've heard it quite a, uh, several times that quite a few people have an issue with the world, uh, with the word or the term personal branding. If you were to call it another way, or if you were to describe it, how how would you how would you call this effort? Well, I don't have one word for it. <laughs> I have to say because I think personal branding is. Is describing what it is but i think it's it's mostly making the first impression right first of all so you, you when people visit your profile you have an opportunity to make a strong first impression because that's the first thing people often see when they when they're they have a meeting with you scheduled or a phone call or you know you're going to meet at an event often people check out linkedin first so it's the first impression you make mm -hmm. and, and it's all around uh, your visibility but also your opportunity to stand out against others. Because when I look at myself, I'm a client solution manager at LinkedIn. Search for it on LinkedIn. I think there's like thousands of people, thousands of people at LinkedIn with the same job, mm -hmm. the same job role. Uh, and, and basically we do the same, right? We all 90% or 95% of our job is exactly the same. So what makes me different from all of those other people? And what makes it that people remind me or choose me to have a conversation with against all those others? Mm. That bit around personal branding in this case, that makes me different. 
So if we, if we don't call it personal branding, it might be a way to stand out or it might be a way to achieve your goals and objectives as a professional. I find it difficult to give it one word. Uh, okay. there's tons of things. I believe it, it describes this, uh, this phenomenon, but um, yeah. I think I'm asking this question because I'm also trying to find a word in my head for that as well, for those people who don't like to call it personal branding. I think um, some of our clients call it professional branding or uh, try to um, have a conversation around the world, online presence or your online reputation. So yeah. um, it, it's just, I guess, to, you know, how do you, a conversation starter, right? Or trying to shape the offering for the employees. You know, how do you call this so that it sounds attractive and it doesn't sound perhaps as, um, something that, I don't know, quite a few people, when they think about brands or even influencers, right, they think about Instagram and maybe slightly different way of sh showcasing who you are and what you stand for than how this is done on LinkedIn in the professional and especially in a B2B world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and often I hear, well, I don't want to be an influencer and, and I'm not rec recommending anybody to become an influencer if that's not your ambition. And uh, when you are an influencer, it's a full-time job. So with personal branding, we don't talk about switching into the influencer life, but we're talking about your journey as a professional, where you are today and where you want to go, whether it's in finding new customers, whether it's finding a new job, whether it's get a promotion, whatever it is at this stage of your career and your journey as a professional, where do you want to go from here and how do you leverage your personal brand to achieve that? And that might be different today and it will be in two years or three months because every time you come into this situation uh, with your own journey where you feel like okay now at this stage i need to hit my quota because i'm in a sales uh, in a sales role but in two years you might be sick of the sales role and you want to move into a new industry and then you need your personal brand to find a new job and to find a new group of people that can help you and lift you up to get in front of the new hiring manager where you're going to have conversations with. So it's it's something that sticks with you throughout your whole career, I believe, but it's also something that helps you in different types of situations as long as it's strong and it's relevant and it's active. Okay. So we heard some clear benefits for an employee, yes, for an individual to build their personal brand. If we were to switch it to an employer side, what would you say would be the benefit for employers, so business leaders, leading or thinking about leading those kind of programs for their employees? So actually encouraging employees to build their personal brand. Yeah, I, I think it's a massive opportunity, but it's also something that people still think is pretty scary because are you going to lose talent? Once they are visible, are you going to lose them when, when they're really good and they're doing an amazing job? Is there a risk of losing the people that are very valuable to the company? Uh, but I also think that everybody that works in the company is the face of the company. And the only way to be successful as a company today is by being uh, approachable for people and, and showing the, the human side and the faces behind the brand. So today, we don't really believe only brand campaigns work and only marketing um, activities are the way to build trust. The way that we build trust as, as a company is by showing who the people are within that company. And I also believe that when you have that mindset and you then look at your, your team of people, whether it's salespeople or customer success or any other department, those are the people that your potential clients and your clients are going to reach out to when they're going to have business conversations, whether it's for an upsell or for uh, becoming a new client. And when you have very strong and visible people within your company, they will live and breach your company because they choose to work for you. Does that mean that they 100% uh, ref reflect only your company? No. It means that those professionals have a strong brand and believe in a specific topic to make it more specific I believe in personal branding and I believe in, in, in uh, the whole digital advertising side. And because of that, so that's my personal brand. And because I believe in it, I choose to work for LinkedIn. So that means that LinkedIn is part of my personal brand. Mm -hmm. And what is more powerful for a company than have somebody who's extremely talented and, and, and well-known and people trust that person saying, 
because I know what I'm talking about and because I know what's going on, I choose to work for this company. That makes your company extremely valuable and you automatically have more trust with your potential customers. So by turning it around and say, okay, how can we attract people that have strong personal brands and, and know what they stand for and are not afraid to, to share knowledge and experience, attract them to our, to our company and let them show that there's a lot of value in our company. That's where you're going to attract customers like crazy because they, they're looking for people who know it all. You know, they, they think uh, personal branding people, as we call them, are the experts. Whether we're experts or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the company chooses to buy from those people. And when you attract those people to your company, this is where the success eventually will happen. So don't be afraid for it. But join those people and, and leverage the brand that they have. And yes, people will leave at some day and new talent will join you. So don't be afraid for that. Just make sure that you're part of that personal brand that your employees have. Great advice. So this is very much also about um, the fact that people buy from people, not logos, right? And the times have changed where the only information that you had available was through salespeople who were coming to visit you and they had a brochure yes i remember printing those uh, that was my one of the, my first marketing activities printing the brochures for the salespeople to go to the meeting and answer all the questions that the client had and then the client would go and speak to a few more salespeople and then make a decision on who they would be buying from well these times are gone right people yeah. want to educate themselves online clients prospects uh whoever it is people who are searching for a new employer to join the company they will want to learn as much as possible about the company to feel that they've made the right decision so yeah. making people visible online your people visible online and getting them to share their expertise helps helps with that right helps build that trust like you said but how do you do this so this is my question like some people i know that for example like you within linkedin that's their interest that's something that they start on their own you know they've got this in them that they want to um you know try all the different things you know how to how to speak publicly how to make their voices heard but what about those that don't know where to start what could an employer do to encourage that kind of effort yeah i think that the most important first step is for an employer and i know it's a bit of investment but but it's training your people what is a good LinkedIn profile? Uh, what are other social channels that you're currently active at? And what do other people see? And I'm not saying you're going to sell uh, via Instagram if, you, if you're a B2B company, but everything that your, your employees have live is visible for your potential customers. And by training people, first of all, and investing in them so they understand um, what a good... Um, how should I say it? What is a good LinkedIn profile? What is visible of me? What is the impact of having a, a private Instagram versus a, a public Instagram? You know, what is the effect of having those the, the social presence that you have today? And if you want to be successful with LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is one of the things you would recommend from a B2B perspective, um, how does it look like? And don't tell your team, okay, we're going to build your personal brand or we're going to focus on your profile because we want you to promote our company. Company, Now tell them, we have this massive benefit where we're going to help you to become a professional a professional online that is, is we're going to give you something that's going to stick with you throughout your whole career. We're going mm -hmm. to help you to build that perfect profile. We're going to help you with the first three or four steps. And by giving a lot, people are more willing to eventually start to give as well. So if you help people to build the perfect profile, you invite a photographer to make nice headshots, you might invite somebody to, to do a training on what type of content should you be sharing, uh, you know, what are the things you can do once you have a good profile? How do you build a network around you? How do you use your LinkedIn profile to gain knowledge, you know, just to upskill your people. And then you come to a certain point where you're like, okay, Listen, you have this amazing profile now, but you also want to achieve your quota or you also want to help the company grow. How can we combine this? So again, help them, advise them. It's your brand. We as a company are part of it. How do you position yourself and how can we leverage from that as well? But that stage is not after two weeks. 
that stage comes in a bit later. And ideally, I, I would love to see this as part of an onboarding when somebody joins a new mm -hmm. company. Uh, and and because I think it's 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 so important that you first build that that strong profile and that brand before a company comes in and says, okay, now you need to start sharing content about us. Because that, that way it's not going to work. It's only going to work when you first make your employees successful and then you're going to lift on that success. And in that way, it's going to benefit you both. And is it just about sharing the company content or could they share something else? How would that work uh, when it comes to the content strategy? No, uh, I, I would never recommend to only share company content because in that case, if I want to see company content, I will follow the company. I connect with somebody because I'm interested in the professional behind that profile. Uh, so when you start to share content and you also want to include company content, I like to use the, the 411 rule. I'm pretty sure there's others as well, but I prefer to use this one where I say when you share six times over a week or two weeks, whatever the period is, four times you share content that is third party content. So it's content that is not necessarily uh, from one page or from one person, but it's trends, it's it's what's going on in the industry, it's uh, a nice video, I don't know, about uh, maybe a TED talk, you know, something that is really inspiring. So four times you share content that doesn't talk about you, that doesn't talk about the company, it just talks about the industry that you're active in or the topic that you're claiming around your profile. One time you share something more personal. So maybe you're doing a training and you have a nice team gathering and you're sharing a picture of the team, or maybe you um, you work on a really cool project or you read a really interesting book, or you know, something that shows a bit of your personality so people get to know you. And then one time you share company related content, ideally not directly a product demo, uh, maybe something a bit higher in the funnel, so a bit more focused on branding. But it can, can be definitely be uh, company content. Because the funny thing that will happen is four times you share something that is third party. One time you share something personal. So people have seen five posts from you. And chances are they're really interesting. So the sixth time you're posting, they're going to click on it as well. Because mm -hmm. you always share really interesting content. So this must be interesting as well. And when you do it in that way, you will see that the engagement on the company content is much higher than when you would only just push out company content, especially when all people in the company are pushing out the same message. Yes. There's no value in that because then we all know it's it's just a setup program to do so. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for professionals with their own opinions, deciding to do a post because they believe it's relevant for their network. What if, what if someone is not ready yet to share? So let's say um, an employer invested in getting people to optimize their profiles and they've done that, but they, I don't know, there might be some reasons why they're not ready yet to share or they don't feel comfortable to start sharing or um, um, yes, producing their own content. What would your recommendation be at that point for an employer to follow, to get people to that level? Yeah. I think, first of all, it's just respect the fact that not everybody wants to be as visible as we are right now, right? We're on the spot doing this live. You know, it's a massive step for a lot of people. Yes. So when you have your, your team set up with a good LinkedIn profile, that's already one massive milestone that you achieved. Because every time when one of your customers or potential customers is visiting the profiles of one of your people, they at least have a good first impression. So that is the, the first win that you have and is already very, very valuable. Then I think it's up to training and knowledge and, and supporting people in how to do it right. Because one of the things I advise people when they're like, I'm not sure if I should be posting or am I posting the right things or where do I find articles? I always say you can also start by just commenting on a post that you see in your timeline. Because mm -hmm. what happens is you place a post or a comment and when you share a like or comment on a post, it also becomes visible for your own network. So they will see it in their timeline and it says Wendy just commented on post and then people can also see the comments. Uh, it's, it's an easier way of being visible and it's also not as time consuming as some people think it is to find content. And I think on the other hand, 
there's also a massive opportunity for employers because your your team can gain knowledge from the platform by following the right companies, competitors, influencers. So that there is a benefit in investing in it anyway, even even if we're not even talking about being that visible as we would like them to be when we talk about personal branding. Okay, great advice, great advice. So following people, uh, engage in potentially in a conversation that somebody else is uh, driving simply because of the fact that that will give you visibility and that will help you actually get yourself visible in a quicker way, right? Because it's probably... Yeah. It probably it depends how long comment and how in depth comment, but it probably is quicker to actually comment on someone's content or like someone's content than actually produce your own. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's also a role for an employer there because one of the questions I had earlier this week when I was talking about personal branding as well was, okay, but I don't want to join a conversation where the, there's going to be a discussion and it's going to be difficult or people are going to disagree with me or, and I think there is a role for an employer there as well. In, in explaining to people, first of all, how do you interact, what, to, what tone of voice, what to do in a situation when, when a client does complain to you or mm -hmm. does have an issue, or you know that there needs to be a plan for that as well. So people feel like, okay, I'm gonna get started at LinkedIn, but my employer has my back. When I come into a situation where it doesn't feel right or I get stuck or I don't know what to do, there's somebody that can help me out and, and can solve it or there's enough training for me that I know exactly what I should be doing in those types of situations, or how do I make sure I don't get into those situations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see that a lot as well um, on our side, that um, uh, before someone even starts that kind of program, um, they have a social media policy in place, or they have maybe perhaps some sort of e-learning or a training for people to understand those basics in terms of what happens if Yes, what happens if somebody complains about uh, something to do with uh, our services? What happens if um, um, I don't know how to reply on someone's comment? What happens if uh, yes, something else happens? So it really, for some people, that's really helpful to have that kind of framework to work within uh, so that they feel more comfortable of, um, about getting themselves out there and uh, discussing publicly subjects. Yeah. I think this is a good time as well for our audience. If you would like to join with asking any questions to Wendy, we've got Ryan saying, hi, Justina and Wendy. Hello, Ryan. Mm -hmm. I hope you can hear us okay. Um, you know, if you've got any questions to Wendy, please feel free to pop them into chat and uh, I will then uh, um, read them aloud. So I've actually got a question, Wendy, that came from someone who uh, commented on our event page. Yes, so when we created the event page for LinkedIn Live, um, can an employee do too much of personal branding? And how do you deal with employees that have a stronger brand than the company itself? I would say, do you deal in any way different with those kind of employees? So sorry, once again, these are maybe two questions. First one, how can an employee do too much of personal branding? Let's start with that. Well, I think it goes back to, can you do too much of personal branding? So can you be too active in the timeline? And I think, yes, you can. I mean, even when you're extremely relevant, nobody is waiting for somebody to post 10 times a day. I mean, it's too much. So if that happens, if one of your employees is over enthusiastic and is loving this concept of being visible and just wants to go more and more and further and further, I would have a conversation and say, okay, what, what do you try to achieve? You want to be visible, you want to grow your network. Great, you're doing an amazing job, but why not saving half of the content you're creating or you're finding to spread it out a bit more evenly and make sure that it actually gets an opportunity to get in front of people. Because when you post 10 times a day, it's, it's absolutely not gonna help you to be more visible. It's just spreading out the impressions that you're gonna get on your updates. Um, and support them in a way that they understand that there's not really a value in being overactive uh, and, and explain them how to do it better so they can achieve better results because I guess that's what they're looking for. And uh, other way around, it, it's benefiting you as a company because you have another brilliant employee being visible in the right way. Okay, that's a great advice. Um, so really, the second question, how do you deal with employees that have a stronger brand than the company itself? You basically just answer it, right? You you have a well, first thing if they are, well, that was more about, yes, people sharing too much, yes, being maybe a bit too active in terms of posting. But if they have built a very strong brand, can you see any, 
I don't know, negative side to that? That's uh, if, this, if, the, if the brand is really strong? No, I think you should pay them extra. <laughs> They're an extra marketing <laughs> channel. No, I think it's amazing, right? When somebody has a very strong brand and they want to work at your company, so you can leverage that brand that they have. I don't think there's a risk. I mean, uh, when they when they have a very strong brand, you probably know what they do. You know, you know it because you've seen them on LinkedIn or, or other channels. Um, yes, have a conversation and try to understand what they do. Why do they do it? Um, what's their goal? Um, you know, try to understand how they build that and, and what they want to achieve with it. But I don't think there's a negative impact on a company. I think it's 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 a big win to to bring in somebody uh, that is very visible. Right. It's um, it's actually proven that um, um, your very often your employees reach right. So the amount of connections that they have combined together. Um, so we're talking now about one person, but you may have several people like that are much higher than the reach of your company's pages. 10 times hundreds of times sometimes higher yeah. so it's only should be an encouragement right for um giving people that opportunity to make themselves more visible because both the person and the employer will benefit from it exactly yeah yeah and connect them with the marketing department to see if you can leverage some of their content i mean i see so many opportunities there it's uh yeah as i said i think it's a, it's a big win for a company to bring in somebody who is a thought expert in the area that your company is active in. Uh, they already have that trust of a large audience. I mean, what else could you wish for? I think it's, uh, it's a big win. I think sometimes people struggle to put their knowledge out there in a written format or in a spoken format. So I guess perhaps that's where marketing could support, right? You say put people in, in contact with marketing. Have you seen that happening and what sort of support that was? Um, what kind of support that was offered? Well, I think it's um, when you have people who, who have a strong personal brand and they create their own content. If I take myself as an example, I'm, I'm not saying I have a strong personal brand, but I am visible and I like to create videos. So when I'm in contact with the marketing department and they would ask me, could you be joining in a video to talk about a customer testimonial? Or could you be joining and creating a video about ABC? I will be much more likely to do so because I'm already used to creating content and being visible and having my face in front of other people than somebody who's not. So it's not even using the content they create themselves if it's not relevant for the marketing department to use that content, but it does help you to create content quicker with lower investments. You probably save a lot of time because they're already used to speaking in front of a camera. You don't have to cut 20 times in a video of one minute because they're used to just pitching it. I think in that way, there's also a lot of benefit in, in leveraging the personal branding activity. So the, the, the experience that somebody already has. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a question uh, from Sharon. Um, how open are employers for personal branding for employees? Okay. And what type of uh, companies are doing this? What's your experience, Wendy? I think, and, and I, I always worked in IT companies when we talked about personal branding. Uh, I think especially in the IT, a lot of companies are very open to it because they realize that their employees are the face of the company. And also, especially sales teams, they realize that sales is not done, as we previously talked about, by doing cold calls. The, the, there's a lot of conversation around um, how do we get warm introductions? How do we make sure that we connect with our prospects and customers at the right time with the right message? So then you already dip into the, the social part. And often companies that work with those types of sales organizations, especially in B2B, especially in the IT industry, they are very open to it and they understand the value. I don't have much experience outside of the IT industry which doesn't mean it doesn't happen there. And I do see a lot of benefits in doing it in other industries as well. But I don't know if they're very open to it or not. Maybe Justina, you have more experience there. Okay, so I can definitely say from our experience that IT is leading the way. Um, I think simply because of the fact that IT is used to all the time keeping on top of the latest technology. Right. So also the kind of people that IT companies employ have got that kind of mindset of knowing that they keep on having to learn new things um, to be ready for 
um, the next change uh, in the industry, the next development, you know, the quick adjustment uh, to what is happening. But things are changing and we are seeing, for example, manufacturing companies, quite a few manufacturing companies interested in, well, already building uh, personal brands of their employees because of exactly the same reasons. They've seen the value, they've seen that um, they know that their employees have a lot of knowledge. Um, if they share it uh, internally, of, often it starts with sharing it internally. So finding, for example, ways of sharing it within the internal social media platform before they go externally. Uh, but once they do, it benefits everyone within the company and everyone outside, and it helps the company innovate quicker. Uh, so yes, IT definitely leading the way, but we've seen manufacturing, we've seen legal companies, uh, doing that as well. Any professional services, again, knowledge-based, uh, any kind of company employing people whose uh, job is um, very much uh, about educating themselves, continue educating themselves in the latest trends um, would benefit from this as well because their clients will be searching for this information and their clients will want to work with someone who is on top of the game who knows the trends who knows what's going on who understands understands their problems yeah i can imagine it's relevant for companies with long sales cycles because we see on average somebody needs to see a piece of content 10 times before they're willing to have a conversation so and in, in, in those cases are often long sales cycles with a lot of touch points and as you said that can be in several industries that's not only specific to the it industry so Absolutely. I think I've seen the latest de data. I can't remember where it was from. 24 pieces of content. Oh, wow. Some people need to see. This is the latest one. Literally a couple of days ago, I think our um, CEO was sharing that data in uh, one of the conferences. 24 pieces of content. Nowadays, people need to see from the same company in order to um, build the trust that they are a specialist, that they know uh, what they are doing. So, again, things are rapidly changing. Yeah, um, I hope that answers your question, Sharon. Uh, feel free to pop more questions uh, to us if you have uh, for any of you that are listening. Where does that leave salespeople? Should salespeople become specialists or should they be them? Uh, the special? Okay, let me just refine that question. Should salespeople start sharing more knowledge online? Uh, yes, yeah. And, and not only for their employer, but also for their own success. Because it's a, it's a, it's a great way to, uh, to hit your quota as well. Let's be honest, I'm in the sales world as well. And in the end of the day, the, the quota is what matters for salespeople. They want to achieve their quota. Um, and if, if your personal brand helps you to achieve your quota, it's a massive driver for salespeople to leverage personal branding. On the other hand, as we talked about, why is it relevant for the employer, all the benefits we just talked about. But when you have a team of people hitting their quota, you're growing as a business. So it, it's, it's benefiting both the employer and the employee, so the salesperson, when they achieve their quota. And that's just one thing. I mean, we mentioned all the other things, but yes, it, it, when you are in a sales role and you want to hit your quota, you want to be successful, you can leverage your personal brand. Again, it's part of the journey where you are today. So today you're gonna to use your personal brand to hit your quota. And maybe in two years, you're gonna use your personal brand to get another job. And two years later, you're gonna use your personal brand because you're opening up your own business and you want to attract customers to your business. So it's, um, it's one of the things you can do with your personal brand. So should salespeople invest in it? Absolutely, because it's gonna help them but it's going to help them in the same way as it is going to help other people in other roles. Okay. So what could they do apart from that? Because you, um, I mean, you said that um, what, what helped you really in your sales role was the fact that you were sharing the content and then you were um, sending emails. So people were checking your profile uh, to be able to find that content. But I would imagine it takes time to create content um, for salespeople um, or for anyone really um, to do that. What would be your tip specifically for the salespeople on how they could do it effectively amongst all of the other things that they are doing at the moment as professionals? 
Yeah, I think it's um, first of all have a clear understanding of who are your prospects, what companies do they work at, uh, who are those people, what type of roles do they have. Um, but by understanding what your target audience is, basically, because your your group of prospects is your target audience, you can find out what's on what's what's their problem, what's their challenge, what's on their mind, what's keeping them awake at night. And by understanding that, you can start to share content that is basically answering those questions. And that brings me back to if you know that your uh, target audience are CMOs because you're selling a, a marketing solution and you know that one of the things that is top of mind, which is I'm just making something up, measuring the ROI of your investment, and you start to share articles about how to measure ROI of marketing investments, that's where you first of all start to build a bit of thought leadership around you. And when you then start to reach out to your prospects, the people you want to engage with, by, for example, connecting with them and not in a way like, hey, I want to connect and I want to schedule a call uh, to talk about the product that we sell, but in a much more friendly way saying, hey, um, I checked out your profile. I see you're working at this company in this type of role. Uh, I, I would like to connect to learn more from what you do, uh, the content that you share, you know, make a nice introduction why you want to have that person as part of your network. Maybe you can also say, I'm very active in the marketing industry as well. And I think we have a lot in common. Let's connect and, and share uh, knowledge with each other. I uh, learn from you, whatever you, you feel comfortable with, as long as you don't mention that you want to sell something. Once you have them in your network and you're being active, they see all the content you share. They see your activity. They see that you have a lot of knowledge. Once they start to interact with your content, or they start to visit your profile. This is where you see the first opening in scheduling a meeting because you know they're interested in, in meeting you or getting to know you. And maybe it's only a handful of people in the first two or three months, but you will see the longer you do this, the more people will be likely to interact with your content. And also, once you do this for a couple of months and you then reach out to people who are already part of your network, who you're very likely have been in their timelines, you will see that once you then send them a message, they will be much more likely to have that conversation with you. So it's all about giving first before you can take. And now it sounds like a lot of work, but if you commit with yourself to invite maybe five people in a week by doing a lot of research, who are those people? Why are they my prospects? What is keeping them up at night? Um, what industry do they work in? You know, what you will do anyway when you're a salesperson and then prepare a nice customized invite showing that there's a relevance in connecting with you and not following up with a sales pitch right away, but just keep it to that connection that you have and build up that trust and then start to leverage that. That's where you will see that it will work for you. And I know you have a lot of reasons why you want to have that conversation today, but in the end, we see whether it's via social selling or, or however we want to call it today, digital selling or personal branding, it's going to take time. But the same will happen when your marketing department is generating leads. They will also not be able to generate leads for you from today if you need them today. That's going to take time as well. So accept the fact that you need to invest first before you can take. And uh, that if you want to grow that, that nice and warm network around you that you can dip into and then eventually have those sales conversations with, Give it a bit of time to build it up. Maybe divide your prospect group in two and one is focused on LinkedIn activities and the other one is still your cold calling old way of doing it. That's fine as well. But just give it a bit of time to build that trust and build that, um, yeah, that thought leadership around you so people will be like, it's a no-brainer to have that meeting with you because you're an expert. I want to chat with you and I want to hear from you what you think because what is keeping up at night is measuring the ROI of marketing. And it sounds like you have the answer for me. So that's where you want to be as a, as a salesperson. Excellent. So as you were speaking, I was trying to make a few steps uh, for someone that uh, could take it away. If a salesperson is listening to us now, um, optimize your profile. Yes, as the starting point, because this is your window to the world, to the online world. Uh, have a look at uh, if you're not ready to start sharing the content, uh, perhaps uh, start engaging with other people's content. So that gives you some visibility, you, makes you join the conversations. 
when you start sharing content, that might be a good chance as well to start reaching out to people with that content with a via a personal message to then grow your network so that the network then starts seeing your content within their feed, starts potentially interacting with it. And when you see those positive signals that someone perhaps might be ready for a conversation with you or they reach out directly to you, um, then you know that this is a good time to start discussing uh, potentially um, something more related to specific offering that you may have for them. Is that a correct explanation? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. And then how much time does it take? If you can schedule 15 minutes per day in your calendar, you're already making massive steps. Five days a week, 15 minutes per day, uh, starting with updating your profile, you know, as, as the, the priority of week one, and take it from there, you will definitely see results. You don't need hours and hours because now it sounds like it's a lot of work, uh, but it's uh, it's not that big of an investment uh, when you do it right. And remember, it's an investment to um, while being in the sales role in in achieving your your quota at some point, finding new customers, build those strong relationships. But it's an investment for the long term. So not only for today, not only for this year, but for your whole career, basically. And then it's not much time, right? Fifty minutes per day. Doesn't sound like much at all, does it? <laughs> what do you do in your 15 minutes per day nowadays uh, relating to your personal brand? So I'm uh, I'm currently uh, making um, a video series on how to improve your LinkedIn profile in 10 steps. So I'm posting one video per day and every video has one specific topic related to your LinkedIn profile to help people to basically improve their LinkedIn profile in 10 days. So after those 10 days, uh, when they follow those steps, they have the perfect profile. So that's uh, that's my thing these days. It takes a bit longer than 50 minutes to record all the videos, but uh, once they're ready, uh, I post them and that's, that's about it. And then some interactions with people. So looking at my feed, um, seeing some up, some updates and, and then play some comments, of course, to keep up that uh, that engagement uh, and, and reaching out to people, connecting with them or accepting invites. <coughs> so it's, uh, it's a bit of all. Again, sounds like a lot of work. It's not. But um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So keeping the audience that I that I have warm with creating content, so being relevant for them. And on the other hand, continue to grow my network by reaching out to people with similar interests in similar industries. Um, and also, uh, when somebody wants to connect with me, try to understand why they want to connect, not because I feel like I'm too good for people to connect with, absolutely not, but I want to understand if I can add value to them. Because if somebody connects with me and we have nothing in common and my content is not going to be relevant for them, then I don't really see why we should be connecting. And then I try to understand what's in it for you to connect with me. And if I understand and it makes sense, then of course, happy to connect. But if not, why wasting each other's timeline with mm -hmm. updates and activities that are it's not helping one of us? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there you go. Um, the number one step was uh, optimizing your profile. So in case... Uh, you haven't had that information for those of you who are listening us uh wendy is publishing videos right now every, is it every day one video did you say for the next 10 days i think we are on day i think i've seen a couple of them we are on day two yes yeah. okay so no excuses you can have a look at uh, wendy's profile and the videos are there so you can start learning straight away okay we've still got a few more minutes so if anyone has got any more questions to ask wendy please feel free to pop them into a chat. I'm just having a look at mine. Um, perhaps that was covered probably uh, um, in some of your podcasts. I think we didn't even mention that you've got a podcast, right? So you've got a personal branding podcast where you share your own knowledge, but you also interview people um, who build strong personal brands or are responsible for building, building employees' personal brands. Um, uh, for their own organization. Is there anything that you've learned through this podcast that I haven't asked you about? Like a oh, top yes. tip, like a top recent tip that you thought you would really like to share with our audience? Uh, I think it, it, it came actually from our conversation. 
because something okay. that that you said which triggered me is we often think about uh, personal branding what do we want to achieve you know the whole being visible and then giving a lot and then taking back but one step that I sometimes forget which you mentioned uh, and and I'm now including it often in my conversation is the learning part by just managing your own LinkedIn feed in the right way you can learn so much from being on the platform following the right companies see what type of content they share follow influencers uh, follow their content, read their content, and just gain more knowledge. And by gaining more knowledge, you're going to be successful in your role anyway. Because the more you know, of course, the better of um, uh, conversations you can have with your customers, uh, the better you understand the competitor landscape that your customers are in, the better you understand their situation, the better the conversations will be. So even if you don't want to be visible or you feel like this is not for me at this stage, um, you can also look at from from the other side and see how can I get value out of it by increasing my knowledge and, and becoming more of an expert by reading and watching because there's so much relevant content there. So it's uh, that, that's one of the things I, I took away from the podcast, definitely. Okay, I'm really happy to hear that. I mean, this is one of the subjects and the angle for that subject about personal branding that I'm really interested in as I learning and development professional because we just see so much nowadays um, of reports. I, I think literally just um, a couple of days ago, Randstad's um, published their report, the latest report, um, Work Monitor, I think it's called, uh, a study that they published since 2003. And they were mentioning there um, that millennials and Gen Z are those type of employees that uh, would prefer actually to leave the company than be unhappy within the company. And one of the main reasons why they stay is personal development. And for me, having that link, it's absolutely clear the link between allowing your employees to build their personal brand links to their personal development. And personal development, if someone sees that they can learn, even just learn, you know, if, they, if you've got this opportunity, the employer allows you to. Uh, go on social media because some don't uh, and use that time to learn then that's a huge benefit both for the employer and both for the um, employee and especially you know for the employer seeing that their talent is staying that they can attract more talent because they advertise this as an opportunity uh, for their employees to be able to grow um, it's huge benefit absolutely yeah and it's a benefit for you again throughout your whole career. So it's uh, yeah, it's great when your employer is supporting that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a fascinating subject. I think you know there is definitely more connections that HR professionals and L and D professionals are seeing that this is not becoming the whole subject of employee personal branding is not becoming um, is not just of an interest of marketing professionals or sales professionals. If HR and L and D can also see are starting to see that this is this is an opportunity for uh, yes. Attracting new talent, attracting new new talent, retaining talent, and for the whole company to innovate, right? To find new ways of innovating because you're allowing people to learn, you're allowing people to share the knowledge, and that way everyone is learning quicker. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you yeah. see that as well in the companies that you were working with? That um, personal branding efforts um, directed at employees help the whole company grow in terms of innovating? Absolutely, yeah. I did a lot of personal branding sessions in um, the company I worked for before I joined LinkedIn. Uh, the company is called Sage. And um, there was a lot of investment in upscaling teams in building strong personal brands. And I always loved how people started that training saying, okay, so I'm here to build a good uh, LinkedIn profile so I can get another job faster. And, and I was like, okay, this is interesting. This is the mindset that, that you have once you start this training, right? Mm -hmm. and then by explaining how it can help you throughout your whole career and how Sage is supporting you in building that strong personal brand and how the company actually fits into that brand, as we talked about previously. At the end of the training, people were like, wow, this is actually pretty cool because they have the trust in me that I can be visible without losing me 
So it's not that they want me to leave and they want me to build a good profile. So I'm taken away pretty fast. No, it's more like they want to invest in me so I can be a better professional, which means that in the end, I'm more successful within the company and they are then more successful with me. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. But it's it's a matter of changing the mindset of people. I think that is that is an extremely important element. Yes, yes, hugely, hugely. And I think change management techniques, this is what we see in as well, that um, uh, all of the program managers who are responsible for uh, this kind of um, uh, initiative within their companies, it's change management techniques are just becoming also number one thing that they want to learn to understand how to change people's behaviors, how to change people's mindset how to encourage employees to join this training and see beyond the obvious benefits of why personal branding is very much for them for them as a as a growth engine as well as it is for the company yeah yeah but secondly for the company so first for your employer and once they get the benefits then you start to benefit as well and i think once you pitch it that way it's like, wow, how can I say no to such an opportunity? Then it becomes a no-brainer for people. And then they're willing to invest and willing to follow your steps and advice. And perhaps this is a great way of learning this LinkedIn life, yes? Because we've gone through what is personal branding and why sometimes it's misunderstood to how you can leverage it to why it's absolutely crucial for both the companies and employees to have a think uh, about this if they haven't already. Wendy, it's been an absolute pleasure, as always, having you uh, joining us uh, on, the, on this conversation. Thank you very much for everyone who joined us as well. Um, if you have any more questions that you can think about later on, please pop them into this chat. Uh, this chat will carry on running, I think, after this event, and we'll be more than happy to uh, reach out to you with the answers. Absolutely. And thanks for having me. And for people who are watching this, if you want to connect, Feel free to connect with me as well. I'm always happy to answer questions there as well. But thanks, Justine. It was a great conversation. Uh, good questions. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Have a good rest of the day, Wendy. Thank you. You too. Thank you.